we're working hard uh, to completely remove groups if, if they exist primarily to, to violate our policies or, um, or, or do things that are dangerous. Groups that do things that are dangerous. What exactly does that mean? Dangerous like hurting other people? Or dangerous as in saying things that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like? Danny Ben David wrote the algorithm at Facebook in 2017, and it was apparently intended to address violence or suicidal content, and we believe that it was uh, applied to politics, and it was used for ill. That seems to be what happened at Facebook. Centra is a tool that Facebook uses to track its users, not just on Facebook, but across the entire internet. Centra tracks different profiles that a user visits, their message recipients, their linked accounts, the pages they visit around the web. Mr. Zuckerberg, how many accounts in the United States have been subject to review and shut down through Centra? Uh, Senator, I do not know because I'm not actually familiar with the name of that tool. I'm sure that we have tools that help us with uh, our, our platform and community integrity work. Um, but I, I am not familiar with that name. The documents are pretty self-explanatory, and it's, it's definitely, um, it definitely, I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg knows that these things are happening, but if he does, he was lying under oath. Right, so wouldn't the sensible thing to do if you were Mark Zuckerberg would be make sure that you don't really know what's going on at your company, so that when you get put in the position where you're under oath, you can basically say anything, and I think this would stand true for Jack at Twitter and a bunch of these guys. If the buck never stops with you, and I'm sure you saw um, Jack from Twitter on mm -hmm. with Joe Rogan and Tim Pool, and it was like, he just struck me as, oh, I don't really know what's going on with my company, but that seems like it's by design. That's mm. not an accident. Do you have a tool that does exactly what I've described and that you can see here over my shoulder? Or are you saying that that doesn't exist? Senator, I, I'm saying that I'm not familiar with it. How many times have you blocked Republican candidates for office, their, their tweets or their posts in, in 2016 and 2018 and 2020? How many times have you blocked Democratic candidate, uh, candidates for office? How many times have you blocked Republican office holders? How many times have you blocked Democratic office holders? Twitter has repeatedly refused to answer that question with specific hard data and, 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 and cataloging the examples. In the interest of transparency, which you said you want to embrace, will you commit in this hearing right now to answer those questions in writing? We're going to work to answering broader transparency around outcomes. All right, that's a no, Mr. Zuckerberg. How about you? Will you commit that Facebook will answer those specific questions, cataloging the number of instances in which Democrats in, in 16, 18, and 20 have been silenced versus the number of instances in which Republicans have been silenced on Facebook. Senator, I'm not sure if we have that data available. Twitter is now an independent nation state with its own National Security Council, an interagency constellation of foreign policy experts. So the global public policy people weighed in today, as security councils do, on the upcoming elections in Uganda. And here's what they said about those elections. Quote, Ahead of the Ugandan election, we're hearing reports that Internet service providers are being ordered to block social media and messaging apps. We strongly condemn Internet shutdowns. They are hugely harmful, violate basic human rights and the principles of the hashtag open Internet. Access to information and freedom of expression, including the public conversation on Twitter, is never more important than during the democratic processes particularly elections, end quote. So marinate in that a bit. Just let it sink in. Twitter is reminding the Ugandan people that censorship is immoral. It was Twitter being a publisher when it censored the New York Post? No, we have very clear policies on um, the conduct we enable on the platform. Um, and if there's a violation, uh, we take enforcement action and people choose to commit to those policies and, and to those terms of service. Except your policies are applied in a partisan and selective manner. You claim it was hacked materials and yet you didn't block the distribution of the New York Times story that alleged to talk about President Trump's tax returns, even though a federal statute makes it a crime to distribute someone's tax returns without their consent. You didn't block any of that discussion, did you? 
Our policy was focused on distribution of the actual hack materials. D did you and block the, the discussion of the president's tax return material? And in the New York Times case, uh, we interpreted it as reporting about the hack materials. Did, did you block Edward Snowden when he, he re illegally released uh, material? Um, I'm, I, I don't have the answer to that. The answer is no. Let me ask you, were you being a publisher when you forced Politico and other journalistic out outlet to take down their tweets on a topic that you had deemed impermissible? No. We were enforcing our, our policy and our terms of service. I know insiders that I get some information yeah. from. I mean, I'm talking about Google, Facebook, Twitter, like that really these things have become so huge that now their own people inside them are going, whoa, what, what did we help create here? What did these former Facebook employees tell you? Um, so what they told me was that there was a system in place that allowed them to either blacklist or inject stories that weren't trending into the news feed. So um, in, in, a, in, a, in a sense, there were human curators that were actually um, you know, affecting what was showing up on Facebook's trending news feed. Um, you know, for the last two years, Facebook has maintained that it's been an algorithm that's sorting these topics. Um, so we obviously found these revelations to be pretty interesting, to say the least. For the last two years, they've been saying an algorithm is doing this sorting. We have found that actually a small group of 20 journalists that are recent graduates from East Coast private schools and often Ivy League schools are, are the ones that are actually um, you know, activating a trend so that it can show up in your feed or blacklisting it. These young journalists are the ones that are choosing what trends and what doesn't. And, um, and, and you know, the question then becomes whether you trust recent graduates to determine what the most important news of the day is. Big tech exercises massive power. It also enjoys massive corporate welfare. Through the effect of Section 230, a special immunity from liability that nobody else gets. Congress has given big tech, in effect, a subsidy while they become some of the wealthiest corporations on the face of the planet. Mr. Dorsey, I want to focus primarily on Twitter and ask you initially, is Twitter a publisher? Is Twitter a publisher? Yes. No, we are not. We, we distribute information. So what is a publisher? Um, uh, an entity that is publishing under editorial guidelines and decisions. Well, your answer happens to be contrary to the text of federal statute, particular section 230. Did you find any evidence of political bias being applied the other way on, on liberal sites like msnbc.com or Daily Kos or Think Progress? No, we didn't find any evidence of that, but um, you know, at least in one instance, we had a source that was maintaining a list for the course of a six, months, six month period um, in which he found items like Chris Kyle, Ted Cruz, Mitt Romney, and a variety of other conservative news topics that were blacklisted by Facebook's news curators. Facebook released its latest enemies list. Alex Jones, Milo Yiannopoulos, Paul Joseph Watson, Louis Farrakhan, Laura Loomer, all of them were designated dangerous individuals and banned from Facebook and from its subsidiary Instagram. Alex Jones's company Infowars was banned as well and described as a dangerous organization. How dangerous is Infowars? Well, Facebook believes it's so dangerous that you can be banned from using the platform, Facebook, just for sharing its content unless you simultaneously denounce it. Let that penetrate for just one moment. Think about it just for a second. Mark Zuckerberg is not simply censoring opinions. He's prescribing which political opinions you're allowed to have, which conversations all of us in this country can have about America. Keep in mind that nobody voted for Mark Zuckerberg. People don't know that they're being lied to by CNN and the New York Times, and they don't know that they're being de-boosted and shadow banned by Twitter and Facebook. It, it's not so bad if they take your account down and restore it. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's really scary about the deboosting and the shadow banning is that you don't know yeah. that it is happening to you. And right. what you I, can yeah. kind of see it, you can kind of feel it. There are times when everything I'm doing is on fire, and then sometimes where it's just like nothing happens, and those usually have a certain political bent to them. And then you end up really feeling like you're in a mental institution because if you don't have evidence of anything, I don't want to be the guy that's running around screaming everything's a conspiracy and they're coming after me. We have videotape after tape of people inside Twitter, including the Twitter direct messaging guy, uh, saying that they have certain keywords and they consider to be a Russian bot 
if you tweet about God, guns, and the American flag. Any inquiry into big tech censorship practices must take an especially hard look at Google. Google's control over what people hear, watch, read, and say is unprecedented. Almost 90% of internet searches in the United States use Google. Type a few letters into the search bar, and Google will tell you what you should be looking for. The same is true of Google's subsidiary, YouTube, the second most visited web page in existence. When you search on YouTube, programs written by people at YouTube provide you with the results. When you watch a video, a program written by the people at YouTube suggests what you should watch next. And when you submit a, a video, people at YouTube determine whether you've engaged in so-called hate speech, an ever-changing and vague standard meant to give censorship an air of legitimacy. At the end of the day, if these companies don't like an independent people influencing the minds of other people. That's what this is really about. Here's the most amazing thing of all. Our media think that's great. Listen to them celebrate Mark Zuckerberg and sell you out completely. Alex Jones has been banned from Facebook for a long period of time, but now they banned him. They banned his like little underling, Paul Joseph Watson. Now that they kicked them off the platform, that's great for now, but it doesn't roll back the clock. I have no issue with it at all. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. I think they are horrible for our society. Last week, the Democratic Party chairman, Tom Perez, met with a Council on Technology and Society. This council included the CEO of the tech company TaskRabbit, among others. According to a summary of the meeting that we received, the group bluntly asked Tom Perez, again, the head of the Democratic Party, what they could do to, quote, contribute to the broad social good. When you ask that question to the head of the Democratic Party, what are you asking? How can we elect Democrats? Which is what they're, what they're trying to do. People have to remember that these companies are, are publicly traded companies. They get their broadcast license from the FCC in some circumstances. There's sort of entanglements. There's a symbiotic relationship between the corporate press and the government. It's going to require outsiders to blow the whistle because no one in the government is going to do it. Indeed, many of them are on the take. A coalition of major companies, including Verizon, NBC, Facebook, and Google, the biggest companies, has announced a new Global Alliance for Responsible Media. Remember that, Global Alliance for Responsible Media. Now, the stated goal is to pressure tech platforms to, quote, develop and deliver against a concrete set of actions, protocols, and processes for protecting people and brands, blah, blah, blah. In other words, what they're really saying is censorship, and censorship on a vast scale. If they have their way, this will be the end of free speech online and the death, by the way, of mainstream conservatism. Big tech's algorithms and search engines only do what humans at companies like Google tell them to do. Any voice right of center will be tarred as hate speech, Russian trolls, or simply bad for business. That's their game plan. The big tech companies have more power than government. They, they are more powerful than all three branches of government. Somehow we need to hold these people accountable. They're not, account they're not held accountable by anybody. Who elects them? Just as big tech needs and wants data on all of us. The American people need and want data on big tech. They need it to profit. We need it to protect free speech. The point is to establish control. They know that they can dictate what you have the right to say about trans rights or mask mandates. They can dictate what you can say about anything. That's unprecedented power. No one in this country has ever had that power. Our Constitution used to prevent it, but they have it now. And that power, and that power will, come, will in come in handy when they're running, when they're running the government. The government.